the Thomas Nast Cartoon Award, finally a break from war, and uh, this one does not have anything to do with Syria. Please welcome this year's winner, Rob Rogers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. He has prepared a special presentation of his cartooning. Uh, thank you very much to the OPC and to all of you here tonight. Uh, before we get into the funny stuff, I just want to say that, uh, you know, as someone who works from the safety of my drawing table, uh, let's give a, a round of applause to all the people who really risked their lives here as journalists. <laughs> and speaking as, speaking as someone who, who sits behind my drawing table, usually watching, you know, one of the news stations uh, covering these stories, I have one question to ask. Richard Engel, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be in <laughs> Egypt or Syria or somewhere? I mean, what, what's going on, man? Uh, all right, so I'm going to switch over here and, uh, and show you some, some cartoons. Um, I, I imagine that I'm the only cartoonist in the room tonight. Is that, is that true? Uh, OK, so I thought I would give you a little bit of insight into the mind of a cartoonist. Um, before I ever get a cartoon in the paper, I actually have to get it past my editor first. And as you, as you can imagine, as some of you are, are journalists and work for newspapers and, and TV stations, you know, editors can be, can be bears, you know. And so, uh, so I, I, I did a little diagram showing the difference uh, between a cartoonist's brain and an editor's brain. So first we have the cartoonist brain. Now, the biggest thing on the cartoonist's mind is basically toilet humor, <laughs> followed by winning a Pulitzer, keeping his or her job. Uh, I guess that could be winning the OPC award. Should, yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, keeping his or her job in that tiny, tiny little part of the cartoonist's brain, that is taste. All right, now we have the editor's brain, and he's got a lot more things on his mind uh, or her mind, uh, thinking of things like not offending the readers, uh, keeping the publisher happy, winning a Pulitzer again, uh, kissing up to advertisers, the bottom line, and that tiny, tiny little part of the editor's brain that is sense of humor. <laughs> so you can see there's quite a, there's quite a difference in these two. Um, so, but these, these are, now, now what happens is sometimes cartoons get killed because my editor doesn't see things the same way I do. But here are a few that actually made it into the paper and these first few uh, were in my portfolio uh, for, for this award. Uh, here we are in Syria and uh, the UN uh, soldier is saying, uh, sorry I'm late but these harshly worded denouncements don't write themselves. And it says, hey Assad, cut that out. Uh, this is the Taliban saying, binders full of women? We call those burqas. <laughs> now, sometimes cartoons just like jump out at me from, from watching the news. And when I was watching Netanyahu give his presentation at the UN, uh, I, I couldn't help but laugh when he, when he pulled up this, this big you know, foam core poster with uh, this bomb on it. Uh, outlining, you know, Iran's nuclear capability. And, of course, immediately I went back to my childhood thinking about my, the Warner Brothers cartoons I used to watch. So I drew this cartoon. Here's uh, Ahmadinejad, and he's saying, okay, who leaked our nuclear bomb design to Netanyahu? And, of course, there's, there's Wiley Coyote there at the end. But social media has really changed the way uh, journalists are working nowadays. You know, I, I, I liked it better when people actually had to sit down and write a letter to the editor when they hated one of my cartoons, you know? I mean, come on. Uh, you, you, you had to call them and make sure they were a real person, you know, before you put it in the paper. Today, my paper released the story about me winning this award you know, on our website, and, and immediately someone commented, and it was one of my haters, and he said, he said, this is a crock. Rogers is a tool, you know. That was my first comment. You know, the old days, he would have had to sit down and type that out, you know. But, 
um, and, send, and, and actually buy a stamp and put it on there. Um, but anyway, social media has changed everything, even protests in other countries. Um, I miss the days when the death to the great Satan was enough. Uh, this is the Muslim extremist t-shirt shop. Here we have death to Twitter, death to YouTube, death to the Facebook, death to Google. And for those really into the internet, here's death to Pinterest. <laughs> Uh, speaking of social media, uh, this is one of the cartoons I did back when the Pope decided that he was going to start his own Twitter account. Uh, and here it is. And that is actually his Twitter handle there, uh, Benedict. Um, and he's saying, OMG, this 21st century technology is great for spreading my 15th century views on gays, <laughs> women, and contraception. <laughs> LOL. Wait, wait for it. Hashtag say 10 Hail Marys. <laughs> now, as you might expect, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is a very Catholic city, and I get into trouble whenever I draw the Pope. So I thought I would show you one of the cartoons that did not make it into my paper this year. Um, this was when the Pope decided that he was going to retire. Uh, and, and, and the bishop in Pittsburgh calls my publisher all the time. So, so that's why this cartoon didn't make it in. But um, I, actually, there were two that didn't make it in, but this is just one of them. Um, so we have, this is uh, The Pope Retires, and it's, it's not in color because I never got, f got it finished before he killed it. Um, <laughs> here you have a sign, no gays and contraception-free zone, and, and Pope Benedict is saying, hey, you progressive Catholics, stay off my lawn. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's not that bad, really, but, but uh, the first one was worse than this. I, I didn't bring that one, but... Um, uh, but anyway, um, so, so anyway, I, I had drawn two cartoons that day, so I had to come up with something really fast, and surprisingly, it ended up being a good cartoon, even though it was 3 o'clock when I was drawing it, and it was this cartoon here. Uh, it's Kim Jong-un, and the guy's saying, he has his father's eyes. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> And uh, to finish up, uh, I just thought, w wouldn't it be great to look into the, you know, Obama's starting all this, you know, brain mapping and everything. So let's, let's look into the mind of Kim Jong-un. Uh, the largest part of his brain, he's concerned with uh, giving wedgies to America, you know. Uh, enriched uranium, that's, that makes up a lot of his brain there. Uh, he has a man crush on Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Very preoccupied with that. And that tiny little part of his brain down there, that is sense of reality. Now, of course, if he keeps going the way he's going, this is going to be the end result here. So, uh, all right, thank you very much.